now what we'll do is show it from the attacker's perspective, where we'll be showing the uh, execution of the command, the curl command in this case, to connect to the server and run arbitrary code. So as you can see, within a few seconds, this system is encrypted and we have a ransom note. Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. So as it turns out, the same week that I release my antivirus tier list, we are hit by one of the greatest zero days in modern times. So much so that the National Cybersecurity Center says, even as an individual, Log4j is almost certainly a part of devices and services you use online every day. So that answers the first question, who's affected by this? Well, everyone. Whether you're an individual, an organization, this is a massive zero day that is going to affect you. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, it turns out Log4Shell affects a large variety of applications. A lot of them server side, a lot of them client side, but especially things like Apache and web servers. So again, that means every website you visit could be potentially exploited by this vulnerability. To make it worse, in most cases, this is going to be a remote code execution class vulnerability or an RCE. And what that means is it can be used to run any kind of software on your system once the attacker has gained access. So they can remotely run any set of commands or applications on your system, which includes, wait for it, ransomware. And based on the latest data, we have already seen ransomware being deployed using the Log4Shell vulnerability. One of the variants is a ransomware called Consari. Another one, which we'll take a look at briefly in our virtual machine is tell you the pass. And what we've seen is there's been a sharp rise in these ransomware attacks correlating with the log4shell vulnerability. So it's likely that they're being used to spread these threats. Now I'll execute the sample on the desktop just to show you what it does. But just so you understand, I know you guys always ask me, how is it that this threat would execute on my system? Well, if you're affected by vulnerability, that's an RCE class vulnerability effectively, the attacker can run code on your system without you doing anything. So all you would need is to have one application that is affected by this vulnerability and an attacker could use the vulnerability to run any sort of ransomware they like on your system. This is just for the purpose of demonstration, but just to be clear, this is just one of the threats that's been seen a major spike in deployment. So as you can see, within a few seconds, this system is encrypted and we have a ransom note. If we try to check out our files, all of our copies of Shakespeare's plays have been tragically locked. Now, if you're curious about the deployment of the exploit itself, one of our sponsors, Intezer, actually did a brilliant video showcasing it with their Intezer Protect platform. I'm gonna play a clip of that right here. Now, what we'll do is show it from the attacker's perspective, where we'll be showing the uh, execution of the command, the curl command in this case, to connect to the server and run arbitrary code, which in our case here is a malicious file. We can see the alert for it uh, and see the execution from the Spring Boot application uh, gathering the crypto miner itself, the XM rig, and actually executing it. On the right-hand side, we can see the foreign address that's actually connected to our server right now that executed the malware and you can find a link to the full demo in the description. But the point to remember is that attackers are now going to use this vulnerability on any applications that are not updated, that are not patched, to deploy ransomware, web shells, backdoors, all sorts of threats. And it's gonna be really hard to patch all of these systems and to do it in a timely manner because, like I said, it can affect everything from computers to servers to any box anywhere running Windows, Linux, you name it. So if you're one of those guys who comments every time on the video saying, ha ha ha, I run Linux. Well, unfortunately for you, however, <laughs> Log4Shell does not care if you're on Linux. In fact, the demo you just watched was on a Linux system. I know that there's a lot of attackers who are using this to deploy XM rig miners, so malicious crypto miners, but I'm sure that's not the worst of it. And we're going to have very long tail with this zero day because a lot of applications and computers are going to remain vulnerable for an extended period of time. And just to give you a better idea of what exactly does this mean, how does this exploit work? So essentially, log Log4Shell is a vulnerability in the Log4J library. Every time developers build software, 
they don't necessarily write up from scratch every small function or feature that they want to implement because that would be a waste of time. You don't wanna be retyping the same code from the ground up over and over again because most functions are going to be repeated. So for example, if you want to print something like a message on the screen, you don't write the code for that. You just use a printf function that is already defined. Some of you who are familiar with programming might know this and similarly, there's a library for logging. And so anytime any application uses logging, which is, well, all every time, if you have experience maintaining applications, you know that logging is a big part of it. You need to log events in the application. You need to log user input. It's the most fundamental type of data storage that takes place in an application. And so if you're implementing logging in your application, well, you just import the logging library. But as it turns out, there is a vulnerability within a library which would allow an attacker to basically send a certain string to run code on your system directly. This is one of those rare instances where application security, threat research, and all the different areas of cybersecurity just come together because, as I said, it's a very fundamental vulnerability, which means it's going to affect almost everything. Now, if you work in cybersecurity, I'm preaching to the choir here. You've probably had a very hard time in the past week trying to figure out what systems are vulnerable, trying to patch them, trying to see if you've already been exploited. But if you're a home user and you're wondering, well, what can I do? Firstly, update your applications. So if there are any vulnerabilities that have been fixed from the developer's end, you get the updates and the vulnerability gets patched on your system. Secondly, all of the advice that I mention about using the best endpoint security you can applies in this case. And every other case, a common misconception that people have is that if you have a zero day, then your antivirus does you no good. Yes, an antivirus or endpoint security or any kind of detection and protection system cannot protect you directly from a flaw in the code of some application that you use that allows an attacker to run malicious commands, but they can still protect you from the malicious commands being run on your system. We have a very wide playlist covering tests of cybersecurity solutions, so don't forget to check that out on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date and learn more about cybersecurity. This video is part of the Meet Malware series and is brought to you by Antizer Analyze, a threat analysis platform which I use almost every day now. And this is where I find a lot of the samples that I use or that I research. And we can actually use it to analyze the tell you the past ransomware sample that you just saw. And Antizer is going to use its cogene matching to detect this. We have a 31% match with generic malware. So this is one of the rare cases I've seen where Antizer does not directly identify this family. We can look at related samples in VARS total. We can even look at the MITRE attack capabilities. So it has a couple of things under defense evasion and shared modules and execution. So if you're interested in threat analysis, definitely consider checking out Antizer Analyze. You can sign up for a free community account using the link in the description. Also, if you're a business and you'd like to work with us or you'd like to get your cybersecurity tested, have an audit, feel free to reach out at tpsc.tech and we'll be happy to help. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it because I think it's very important to get this information out there. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.